South African Air Force pilots took part in what has been described as aviation's most astonishing achievement ever, the 1948 Berlin Airlift. The Airlift was the Allied's answer to the Soviet blockade of Berlin, the first test of the Cold War. South African pilots took part in an operation that lasted just over 11 months. There are not many aircraft in the world which have captivated man's imagination quite as much as the DC-4, the Skymaster, better known as the Grand Old Lady of the Sky. Built in 1942, the Skymaster is regarded by aviation experts as the most significant development achieved in the history of air transportation. For more than 60 years, the DC-4 carried hundreds of thousands of passengers across the oceans. Today, this plane has disappeared from the sky. Only two commercial passenger carrying Skymasters left in the world. Both are in the hands of South African Airways. This is the story of a delightful journey. A journey across the African continent undertaken by a handful of Skymaster fans. Their destination is Berlin. The city which 50 years ago came to see this aircraft as their lifeline. Greater love hath no man than this, to give his life for a friend. Those days, this plane was called the Rosinenbomben, the Candy Bomber. The South African plane has been invited to take part in the celebration of the lifting of the Berlin Air Blockade 50 years ago. The Grand Old Lady of the Sky is flying back in time. But this is also a journey filled with the wonder of the African continent. We fly back in time to scratch open a piece of history. This we do in one of the few remaining Skymasters. A plane which 50 years ago buzzed across the broken remains of Berlin, where it landed at the Temple of Airport. This is Temple of Airport. It's the third largest man-made construction in the world. And it's quite incredible to think that 50 years ago, these old aircraft happened to be the lifeline of this city and of the people of this city. These aircraft landed at intervals of 30 seconds for a period of 11 months non-stop around the clock to bring food and supplies to the people of Berlin. Captain Flippy Vermeulen is the driving force behind a group of DC-4 fans who are working to keep these old planes and the memory they carry alive. Vermeulen charters exclusive historic flights on the DC-4, a way to make sure that money is generated to keep a legacy alive. The flight to Berlin via Africa okay, is one such like journey. ATC. All right, ATC, it says in your lager to offer the part is traded. Mindful of the historic significance of the flight, Captain Flippy Vermeulen Christians the plane, the spirit of peace. Marcus, Mark, where is Mr. Marcus? Ritzy, Captain Marcus Ritzy. Captain Marcus Ritzy. As tour guide, I would like to offer you a little bit of the champagne that we have used to christen the spirit of peace with and drink a toast to the spirit of peace. Before we start this journey, tell me something about this plane. What makes this plane so special? Let's take a look. Well, this airplane, the, the DC-4 Skymaster played a major role in the development of intercontinental travel. There are very few airlines in the world who have not established the international intercontinental route network without DC-4s. Uh -huh. And then uh, also, in the war effort, it played a major role with flying equipment across the North Atlantic to, uh, to uh, Europe. And of course, it played a major role. It was the main element of the Berlin airlift in 1948-1949. Um, it, 
I don't know whether the Berlin airlift would have been as successful as it had been if it hadn't been for the DC-4. Yeah. So this is the old Skymaster that will fly us across the African continent from Johannesburg through Africa right into the heart of Berlin where in a few days time we will land at the Tempelhof airport where this plane will take part in the 50th anniversary of the Berlin airlift. Thus begins a marvellous journey. Captain on board his ship is Flippy Vermeulen, the guy who wants to keep flying these old Skymasters forever. And Captain Laurie Root, a cowboy pilot whose passion is flying. Meet Tony Weaver, African adventurer and hunter, photographer. And Suzette Pretorius and Marty Badenhorst, Two part-time hostesses, part-time mothers. Our photographer Darren Campbell on board a flight across Africa. And Andre Hose, flight engineer. I've been on this aircraft for uh, over four years. I was asked to join the historic fleet earlier on the Junkers. And it was quite a challenge for me at my age for this aircraft because we have never operated Piston uh, operated aircraft, piston engines, and uh, all I can say is the flight engineer on this aircraft is much more busy than on any other commercial jet aircraft in, in use today. The Skymaster takes us on the first leg of a 15 day long journey. It's not Suzette's first time on the Skymaster, she's been part of the team who started the historic flights right from the start. The passengers are fans of the plane. The DC-4 carries many memories. But from day one, it's the roar of the engine which is most spoken about. Ronnie Butcher is the oldest guy on the crew, the mechanic, the fixer. He loves the DC-4 like an old classic bird. First, the old aircraft flew us over the Victoria Falls, an African jewel where the crew appears like moonwalkers in the rain. The Zimbabweans receive the spirit of peace with generosity. Over the Victoria Falls, Lori Rod tells us why he gives up his spare time to keep this piece of aviation engineering alive. Well, the main, I think, factor that draws us all, the enthusiasts that operate on these aircraft amongst the SAA pilots and flight engineers and the technicians, is the love of the old aviation heritage and everything that goes with it. With other words, the big round radial engines, they make a lot of noise, they have a wonderful sound, smoke, oil, the smell of that. And then the challenge of operating these airliners, modern day, the way they used to be operated in earlier days. And um, to also be involved and fly with these bunch of enthusiasts. And that is, that is really a major, major factor that draws us all to the historic flight. The DC-4 touches down at the Arusha airport in Tanzania. The Skymaster's crew and enthusiasts will be taken to one of the most intriguing places on Earth, the Ngorogoro crater. But first, Marty Badnos must protect the plane. And Andre Hoes changes his hat from flight engineer to baggage handler. This is flying in Africa. 
landing in Africa, landing in Tanzania, all these people have to get their own trolleys to move their uh, luggage. Okay. Because if we are to use some of their carts, it will cost us a fortune. This is what uh, the pilot just told us. So, all these guys are carrying their own trolleys and pushing their own trolleys and carrying their own bags. And if you swing your camera around, you'll see that amazing shot of these people going around. <laughs> Look at that. The Ngorogoro Conservation Area is a world-renowned biosphere reserve which, together with the Serengeti, supports the largest concentration of wildlife on Earth. We're about to enter the Ngorongoro Crater, which is uh, possibly the greatest wildlife area in Africa. And, uh, yeah, it's, the road up ahead is pretty bad because the, they've been hit by very heavy El Nino rains here. We gather that there's bad mud on the floor of the crater, but we're hoping to see really, really spectacular wildlife. There is not much of an infrastructure here, and the area becomes quite crowded during the high season. Well, going down was a lot easier. Going up, of course, is one hell of a struggle. But we've got a very good driver here. He's been very careful, but it's a bumpy drive. But we're going to make it, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Scenic grandeur and stunning views are the hallmark of this wonder of the world. It is the water catchment in the 610 meters deep and 260 square kilometers big crater which is the lifeline to its animal treasure. There are more than 25,000 larger animals within the crater itself. Nature at play. Every movement a moment of drama. But these growling creatures also dot the skyline. Inadequate services result in serious problems with erosion. And that is a real threat too. Well, here we are, right inside this magnificent crater, the result of a volcanic eruption that took place many thousands of years ago. It's breathtakingly beautiful. And as you can see behind me, the Maasai people also come down here to bring their cattle to feed. It is, in one word, exquisite. Tony Weaver talks about a volcanic eruption which evolved into one of nature's most exotic treasures. Probably talking several million years ago, it's, it's estimated by geologists that Ngorongoro was once higher than Kilimanjaro and possibly one of the highest mountains in the world um, because of the width of its base. Now what's fascinating about it is that it is now virtually an, an, a totally intact and separate ecosystem, separate from the environment around it. The wildebeest and the zebra and the buffalo and to a limited extent the elephant do migrate out to look for better um, grazing and so on. But generally speaking the lions, the rhino and several of the other species live in there all year round and they never move from the crater. On the other side of the wall of the crater we encounter a Maasai tribe. The Maasai people alone, among the many tribes of Eastern Africa, have turned their backs on civilization. Well, almost. Uh, it's ten dollars for each. Yes. Ten US dollars per visitor makes this tribesman a very rich man. The monetary system has arrived in tribal Maasai land. Ever since white man came to Africa, there existed an unhappy love affair between him and this handsome and arrogant tribe. With high jumps, the men display their power and virility. They still drink raw blood and cow's milk and, according to Western scientists, are on average probably as fit and healthy as an Olympic athlete. But they live in seclusion, where fellows of the same age are allowed sexual play with the wives of their mates, which means that each man has a number of children by a number of wives and everyone is everyone's brother or sister. A system foreign to our ears, but essential for the survival of the tribe. And as we ponder the life of this rare but beautiful tribe, the grand old lady once again takes to the sky. She was built 60 years ago, her capacity today as great as then. Well, actually, uh, uh, mainly on this route, this aircraft is doing, it's uh, not one of the sectors are actually due to refueling stops. You know, she can actually stay in the air for 12 hours. She has enough fuel for 12 hours flying at very close to uh, 200 knots. Well, it gives you a comfortable 2,000 nautical mile, that is 3,600 kilometer range. So you've got quite a wide striking range with this aircraft. 
fasten your seat belts now. We are now approaching the runway. Zanzibar is indeed the world's oldest and sexiest spice girl. You are easily seduced by her lusciousness, the sweltering heat. I say welcome to Zanzibar. <laughs> the first sensation that hits you is the happy islander's lifestyle, the half-naked bodies of its leisurely citizens. The coral rack houses where the sultans previously presided. Zanzibar is one of the most fascinating places in Africa. It was once ruled um, by the Sultan of Oman as part of an entire empire which stretched right along the coast of Africa. And um, it was, of course, one of the major, major slaving ports in Africa. It's estimated that most of the slaves that came out of East Africa went through Zanzibar. And David Livingston, the, the great explorer, swore that he would eradicate Zanzibar from the face of the earth. He called it Stinky Bar. He hated it so much. Very vicious, but at the same time a very grand and very opulent dynasty that lived on Zanzibar. Stinky Town is a place of dreams. The paradise just off Tanzania's north coast has lured travellers for centuries. Some in search of its rich spices, others in search of plunder, and yet others in search of an idyllic home. The island can look back at a history of torrid love affairs, with the Egyptians, the Persians, the Portuguese, the Assyrians and the Chinese. The Persians settled here and ruled for many years, but the Portuguese also left their legacy. This is one of Stone Town's major attractions. It's a prison, an old fort, a prison built by the Portuguese back in the 17th century. What was more than 200 years ago a cold and terrifying prison cell where dozens of women were crammed into is today a makeshift studio where young Stone Town artists work. And as those women who were incarcerated as slaves by their foreign masters were barely able to survive, these artists, ironically dependent on their foreign visitors, are also engaged in their daily struggle to survive. There is something painfully ironic in the life of the artist, bound by economic dependency, who finds himself held by the walls of prison. House of Wanda is built for Portuguese too. But the House of Wanda, it is a special building. Uh, when the time the Portuguese want to build it, every pole has a head under the ground. When the Portuguese are uh, ready to build it, they put the big hole and put the head inside the hole, then they put the cement on it, and they put the pole, it is ready to build the house of wonder. No visit to Zanzibar will be complete without taking in the delights of its marketplace with the smell of saffron and cinnamon bedazzles the senses. The visitor remains oblivious to the hardship of the island life, where in this labyrinth cluster of winding streets, there are people who are still trying to free themselves from their perverted past. Well, we are from Zanzibar up to Djibouti, and we'll be crossing the coast at Mombasa in Kenya, then up um, the uh, along eastern Kenya into Ethiopia and then from there to Diri Dawa up to Djibouti oh. and then uh, up in the northwest here at Asmara there's a little political unrest at the moment but that doesn't that won't affect us at but all. There's been there's been quite a bit of fighting there the past couple of days you're not concerned about that that's not going to affect this flight at all? No the information that we have from um, the um, IATA specialist is that uh, that's way to the northwest up near Asmara and won't affect us what at all. What sort of distance are we talking about here? Oh, that's uh, a good uh, 150 nautical miles away, mm -hmm. or so more, 200 nautical miles quite away. Quite a long distance. Yes, right. it is. Yeah, While well, we're here, just for one minute, uh, how's the plane been holding out so far? Then any technical problems, the, any hassles so the far? The plane has been absolutely superb. We've had um, only minor oil leaks, which we worked on yesterday, and it's 100%. Uh, we have Djibouti, the French-speaking country in the northeastern parts of Africa, is a quick pit stop. Yes, I am a, I am a fire brigade chef now. I work 24 hours, days, and I stay, I rest uh, 48 uh, hours. The Djibouti ground crew join hands with the South Africans to put some shine back into the old lady. This is an old tradition by which we all club in a certain amount of money and we have the initials of all the six crew up here and then you win that money and this is mine. <laughs> The 
pilot John Makesha works in the sweltering heat to refuel and to get the Skymaster ready for its next flight. Paul Frost pilots the DC-4 across a vast desert towards Jordania. Many stories have been told about the ancient city of Petra, about the kings who wandered through these impressive rocky mountains. It makes sense that the Nabitians, who lived here as early as 7,000 years before Christ, would have chosen to build their protected kingdom from the walls of the mountain. Through these narrow alleyways, they forced merchants to pay them taxes. Out of stone, they carved a fabulous civilization, one of Africa's true jewels. The land is hard and cruel, the heat almost unbearable. The name Petra is derived from the Greek word meaning rock. Rock City was also used as the setting for Indiana Jones's adventures. And hidden between the high stony crevices of the mountain appears the tomb of al Kashne, an evocative Arabic name for an ancient tomb where kings were buried. A tomb which must have bedazzled even our screen hero. al Kashne means the treasury. Here some claim were kept the treasures of the pharaoh at the time of the exodus. Magnificent in the soft morning light, when the rose-red sandstone glows gently, the visitor is taken back to a distant past. And outside, in the almost unbearable burn of the sun, one wonders what it must have been like then, thousands of years ago, when gladiators stormed one another in competition in this amphitheatre. the African continent, en route to Berlin. Flippy Vermeulen is back in the cockpit. Mindful of South Africa's legacy in the Berlin blockade, he takes his baby home. They are uh, a lot of, of very experienced South African Air Force pilots uh, participated in the Berlin Air And that is what Captain Flippy Vermeulen is really all about to remind us of brave Air Force pilots who flew into Berlin, risking their own lives for the freedom of the city. They flew in these old planes and carried hundreds or thousands of tons of food and other supplies for a blockade which lasted for 11 months. 89 South African pilots flew these aircraft in and out of Berlin, around the clock, to break the back of an enemy which had the intent to starve the city into submission. For one delightful moment, Captain Flippy Vermeulen is one of those pilots. South African pilots took part in an operation that lasted just over 11 months during which more than 2,5 million It's 15 of days later, touchdown Berlin Temple of Airport. The old lady is home. We as enthusiasts uh, are really trying to preserve not only aviation the aviation heritage, but specifically the South African Airways aviation heritage. And uh, it is through sheer dedication and a, and a big commitment by a group of enthusiasts that we can actually achieve the results of the article. of great symbolism for the people of Berlin, but also a weekend of great significance for South Africa, who took part in the Berlin airlift 50 years ago. All around, a weekend of great celebrations. Johan Ollers, SABC, Berlin. It was indeed a marvellous journey of discovery and good old sentimental nostalgia.